Hello and welcome uh, you all to this uh, special occasion, to this talk uh, that we'll be holding uh, with a very special guest speaker. First of all, I'd like to welcome you all, those of you who are joining us here at Wikunia Foundation, those who are uh, joining us via Facebook Live. Uh, this is a special installment of a series of talks that we've been holding uh, uh, in cooperation with Wikunia Foundation. Uh, Project Asia Corporation, Macau Business, Macau News Agency. Uh, we've been uh, discussing, uh, keeping the conversation going. Uh, and today, what brings us here today is a truly meaningful and impactful matter. Uh, and there is, I'd like to start by uh, singling out a very fortunate coincidence. Um, Philippe Guadeloupe was reminding me uh, that it was precisely six years ago that uh, we had our guest here, Sonny Lo as guest speaker. That was uh, in 2017, March, right after the two sessions, uh, uh, the an annual uh, plenary sessions of the National People's Congress and the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference. Uh, and the topic was Macau, Hong Kong, and the future of one country, two systems. Um, back then, it was uh, organized by the Macau Portuguese and English Press Association. Uh, and it was a very fruitful talk uh, where our esteemed guest speakers um, enlightened us about the future trends towards regional integration. And six years on, uh, here we are. You, well, I think you look pretty much the same. You haven't aged much. <laughs> the same cannot be said about me, right? <laughs> anyway, um, we have uh, gained uh, uh, the uh, possibility of observing what uh, unfolded over the past half a dozen years. Um, and uh, as soon as I learned that uh, Sonny Lowe, Professor Sonny Lowe, would be in town, then uh, uh, with Rui Cunha Foundation, uh, we have to bring him back because six years have passed, but there's so much to talk about uh, and to further develop on this, on this topic. And the topic, as you may see, is the present and future of Greater Bay Area, uh, Macau, Hong Chin, and Hong Kong Shenzhen integration. Um, before I give the floor to our guest speaker, like of course, uh, I, I, I would say he maybe would not need introduction, but I would like you to uh, learn uh, uh, more a bit about the Professor Sonny Lo. Um, he is a professor at Hong Kong U Space, uh, a veteran commentator, a longtime political observer of Hong Kong, Macau, and Greater China. His books include Casino Capitalism, Society, and Politics of China's Macau, uh, first prize awarded by Macau Foundation in 2022, uh, Political Change in Macau, uh, 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 several other books such as Macau in the Second World War, Political Development in Macau, The Politics of Cross-Border Crime in Greater China, Hong Kong's Indigenous Democracy, and The Politics of Democratization in Hong Kong, among a number of other volumes, dozens if not hundreds of authors. Uh, chapters, articles, and journals in the media, um, and, and also I would like to uh, share with you that uh, his uh, forthcoming new book is The Politics of District Elections and Administration in Hong Kong. And we're also very fortunate because he's been uh, our uh, senior columnist at Macau News Agency and Macau Business. Uh, and he's an old friend, uh, I have to uh, disclose that. Uh, uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a friend who has, I've been reading uh, his books over the years, myself as a student of political science and international relations. Uh, and now we got the privilege of having with us Professor Sonny Lo. So let's welcome him. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I'll give you the floor because sure. uh, we're here to talk sure. about uh, very important, uh, uh, far reaching, and uh, uh, comprehensive topic, please. Sure. So, uh, thank you. I used the cursor, right? Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, hold on a second. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it is my uh, great uh, honor to be invited by Jose uh, and his uh, colleagues uh, to share my views uh, on the integration between uh, Macau Hang Chin and Hong Kong Shenzhen. Six years ago, when I talked about this topic, uh, I predicted that uh, integration would be much faster. And uh, in these six years, I have to say that the integration pace uh, was actually much faster than I anticipated. 
So what I'm going to predict here uh, may not be accurate, but I'm trying to provoke uh, all of you to think further because uh, Macau is changing very rapidly in these uh, six years. Now, first of all, uh, I would like to focus on the legislation uh, on the development and promotion of uh, Hang Qing, Guangdong, Macau Deep Cooperation Song. I don't know how many of you uh, read uh, the uh, 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 legislation. It, it had 66 articles. Uh, I read it uh, three times. And uh, it was uh, approved by the Guangdong People's Congress Standing Committee uh, in January 9, 2023. Now, this uh, legislation is extremely important. And I don't think Macau media have uh, discussed this legislation in detail. Now, let me go through uh, the detailed uh, uh, content. Now, this, uh, my, my talk uh, is uh, trying to, first of all, discuss the content of this legislation. And then I will analyze the trends of integration between Macau and Hang Qin. And then I will discuss the implication for Hong Kong and Shenzhen. And finally, I will discuss the challenge uh, for Macau uh, in the coming years. Uh, Jose, I may, I may have to stay of course. Yeah, yeah, here. Of course. Because uh, with the passage of time, my, my eye <laughs> is not very good. Now, overall, as I mentioned to you, all of you, 66 articles. Article 1 is very important. Uh, it talks about the song promoting Macau suitable economic diversification. This term, suitable economic diversification, uh, appears from time to time in the whole legislation. And most importantly, they said this kind of song is going to enrich the one country, two system. Article one uh, is extremely important. And article two, uh, first of all, I sum up everything uh, for the exact wordings. You have to take a look at the legislation. Article two, they talk about the first line and second line custom control district, excluding Macau University Hang Qing campus and Hang Qing coastal area under Macau jurisdiction. The first line is the area between Hang Qing and Macau. And the second line is the area between Hang Chin and other mainland regions. Now, friends, you may have noticed that uh, in the recent days, uh, the Macau custom has already discussed with the Hang Chin custom on this uh, issue. This is very interesting. And number three, Article 3, the song liberates thinking, innovate reform with mutual benefits, openness, tolerance, facilitating, facilitating a new family garden for Macau residents, friends. New family garden. The Chinese uh, words are, are very interesting. You know, once they have a term, it, it, it is really serious. It, it means that they expect the Macau family to move into Hang Qin. And constructing a yi ti hua, yi ti hua uh, in English, one systemization. Uh, the word yi ti hua actually uh, occurred in 1996 among a group of Shenzhen scholars uh, before Hong Kong's handover to China. And in this legislation, the term yi ti hua appears four times, at least four times. Uh, it means integration, if you like. It means a kind of a one system, new system with Macau, promoting Macau integration with the nation, with the nation, with entire China. Article 4, Guangdong and Zhuhai governments empower the agencies to support the Song as experimental field and pioneering district. This is extremely important, friends. It means that Article 4, Hang Qin and Macau integration is one step forward. Later on, Hong Kong and Shenzhen will follow suit. This is the term experimental field and pioneering district. Again, very important. Article 5, the Song boldly innovates, experiment, implement first with voluntary exploration, showing the open demonstration of one country, two system with Chinese characteristics. Now, then this phrase is interesting. I just sum it up. Departmental agencies without sinister intention but cannot reach the expected target will be exempted from the related responsibilities. It means that the mainland departments, the Macau departments, they can experiment bolder. If they make mistakes and if they do not have bad intention, that's fine. Okay? That's very interesting. That's very unique here. Article 6, the Song Management Committee, MC, is formed by Guangdong and Macau government with dual directors, as you know the Macau chief executive, and also the Guangdong governor, right? Uh, MC needs to submit reports to the authorities on important planning, policies, projects, personnel changes. In the study of Chinese politics, top down, here, yeah, top down, where right? the management committee is very important here. Article 7, the Song Implementation Committee, there's an implementation committee, again, Chinese style, 
deals with the implementation, including international promotion, trade, investment, attraction, industry solicitation, land development. Actually, just yesterday, right, there was an industry solicitation uh, for Indonesia, right? Land development, project construction, education and health, culture and sports, social protection, and other public administrative services. Friends, I don't know how you feel. Once I read this article, they tried to create another smaller Macau. Article 8. <laughs> IC will be responsible for the operation of the Zhuhai Hang Qin MC, the management committee and Hang Qin government in dealing with economy and livelihood. Key words here, economy and livelihood. Key words used in President Xi Jinping's speech and also the 20th Party Congress last year. Article 9, laws, regulations, statutes from the State Council and Guangdong People's Congress and government can be delegated to the Song implementation committee to implement. That's interesting. They use delegated legislation to, to implement the, the Song's activities. Article 10, the administrative duties of the implementation committee are formulated and announced by the Guangdong government. The implementation committee organization duties and list will be formulated and announced by the implementation committee itself. So the implementation committee has some degree of autonomy right, in its governance. And the implementation committee, according to Article 11, autonomously decides its staff salaries, standards, benefits, performance appraisal management system, including the recruitment of staff and professionals outside the zone. Now, this is interesting. Today, uh, Macau Daily News said that uh, the, the cooperation zone opens uh, 26 high-ranking positions, uh, up to uh, $120,000 per month, right? And 200. 72 Macau civil servants apply to compete for the 26 positions. So this is interesting, right? Again, create uh, a small Macau with Macau public service system. Article 12, staff hired from outside who have to know state secrets must report to and secure the approval of Guangdong Management Department responsible for protecting state secrets. And the uh, implementation committee should be responsible for such protection. Now, that's quite interesting. Uh, they, they, they use uh, Article 12 to protect uh, the, the state secrets here. Article 13, Guangdong's party and government send agencies to deal with party construction, national security, criminal judicial affairs, and social order, and they shall work and coordinate with the management committee. Again, top down, uh, Guangdong party and government is, is going to work in this uh, Hang Qing cooperation zone. Article 14, Guangdong province, the leading small group on the construction and promotion of Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, GBA, to coordinate and make decisions on the support and cooperation of Guangdong's related departments, including resources, support, and protection. Guangdong's Yiti uh, Hua administrative uh, service platform and law implementation platform sh should be open to the implementation committee and its work. So I expect that the Guangdong government will have a new, uh, probably a new website or using the existing website and then revamp it in such a way to facilitate the operation of the implementation committee. Article 15, Zhuhai City should communicate, support, serve and ensure the construction of the cooperation zone, including social and urban and livelihood management issues that, if unresolved, may need the coordination from the Guangdong provincial government. So, in, in a sense, it's co-government, two governments here, two governments working together, but basically top-down a little bit from Guangdong, and if there were any arguments, then the Guangdong provincial government would intervene and coordinate. Article 16, Guangdong and Macau government discussed the profit, uh, this is interesting, they discussed the profit-sharing mechanism. The Song financial management is formulated by the Guangdong government, Land usage, rights, transfer, and income after deducting the cost will be shared by the cooperation song and Zhuhai. So this is very interesting, right? One day, if the song is very profitable, then there will be profit sharing. Article 17, the implementation committee formulates the budget with the management committee approval to go to the deliberation and approval of Guangdong government and People's Congress, as well as the People's Congress Standing Committee. So the budget. The financial aspect, it will have to be deliberated by the Guangdong government and also the People's Congress and its standing committee. Very typical. And then other articles. Article 18, Guangdong province audit office will supervise the auditing work. That's quite typical. Macau has auditing work. 
and the song will also have an auditing well, right? Article 19, the management committee needs to build up key performance indicators, KPI, for the song to promote suitable economic diversification and there will be annual assessment with reports submitted to the Guangdong Hong Kong Macau GBA leading group. This is extremely important, ladies and gentlemen. This means that they need KPIs, key performance indicators. Uh, and then every year you have to assess and then report to the leading group. Article 20, the song's planning needs to use the state's special planning as the basis, including land usage, energy use, control, and sewage uh, disposal. Article 21, land supply and usage shall be flexible, including rents. This, this article is very complex. I oversimplify it. They, they talk about long-term rent, concessions, different kind of uh, arrangement, contractual arrangement to support, again, suitable diversification. Chinese terms are very important here. Suitable diversification, suitable, okay? Article 22, transport system shall be perfected including the infrastructure development of the second line so as to strengthen Hang Chi Macau Yi Ti Hua multi-dimensional transport construction. Here, the key, key term, I think, is multi-dimensional. It means that there will be all sorts of transport, underground transport, right, all kinds of transport, uh, railway, you know, or light rail, etc. Article 23, digital government shall be the basis with the construction of the big data center of the smart city Strengthening smart city cooperation between Hangqin and Macau. Well, I don't know how you feel. I think Article 23 means that Macau has to speed up the process of building up its smart city here, right? And then later on, Hangqin. Article 24, underground space will be utilized with efficiency to deal with transport, urban work, disaster prevention, air shelter, and environmental protection facilities. That's interesting. Underground facilities, another city, right? Article 23, ecological and environmental assessment will be made to protect forestry, preserve wetland, reform coastal beaches, and protect marine ecology. Article 26, the song learns from mainland's urban construction and management standards, including high-rise construction, as the nation supports Hang Chi Macau Yi Ti Hua development. You see, the, 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 the term Yi Ti Hua occurs again and again, and I have to translate it very carefully. Yesterday night, I worked until... 12, yes. you know. <laughs> Article yes. 27, Implementation Committee and Guangdong Government set up Safety Production Committee to deal with the safety issues, uh, fire, accident, you know, etc. Article 28, Song develops a suitable diversification, again, suitable diversification, through new techniques, industry, professions, models, like high-end manufacturing, Chinese medicine, cultural tourism, and trade, and monetary and financial industry. This, this article is interesting. They talk about specific industry, Chinese medicine, cultural tourism, trade, right, monetary and financial industries. So they talk about all these industries. And then Article 29, technological, technological innovation and transfer platform shall be built. I just simplify it. It's very complex. You know, some, the Chinese phrase is very complex. Article 30, song, the song should build up electronic new energy Big data, AI, biomedical industry, and logistical networks, as well as microcomputer logistical chain with the production of chips. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, chips. So which companies from China is going to be set up there and then try to produce chips? What kind of talents will be attracted from Macau uh, you know, or Hong Kong, right? Smart health and smart driving will also be developed. Article 31. Uh, support construction of the Chinese medicine base, trade and intellectual property rights with Chinese characteristics. So they try to build up the Chinese uh, medicine base here. Article 32, support the industry of leisure and longevity life, health recovery and management of health related industry, including stem cell research with collaboration with Hong Kong health agencies. So here the implication is that Macau based uh, universities may have to develop all this uh, stem cell research and then later on go into the cooperation zone. Article 33, support the development of leisure tourist resorts, exhibition and convention centers, nothing new here, theater and art, sports events, and interestingly, cruise tourism to develop Hang Chin into an international leisure and tourist island. So for those friends dealing with tourism, cruise tourism will be a big issue. Maybe 
some Macau University should open some master program or bachelor program in cruise management, cruise management, event management, right? Article 34, support the construction of high quality products, import, and consumer trade center, Sino-Portuguese International Trade Center. Specifically, they talk about Sino-Portuguese International Trade Center. So, Jose, you will be very busy. Huh? <laughs> all of us. Yeah, all, all of you. Yeah. Good luck, yeah, very good. And then Digital Trade, International Harbor. <laughs> Article 36, high-end experts will be attracted in the construction process with subsidies and incentives, including the convergence with the Macau Talent Scheme and the relaxation of talents to reside and work with facilitating work visa policy. Well, actually, if you take a look at the uh, uh, mainland government's uh, new uh, talent policy for Hong Kong and Macau, this is already uh, ongoing, ongoing, you know, facilitating work visa. Uh, Article 37, 50%, 50 percent reduction of tax on enterprise profits and tax exemption uh, will be made uh, on those high-end talents whose individual tax exceeds 15%. So some kind of tax incentive here. Uh, maybe, maybe even Shenzhen, similar. Right? Article 38, uh, the Song converges with Macau Education, Health, Social Service, Transport, and Social Protection to provide favorable conditions for Macau residents to study, work, innovate, and live there. So maybe 20 years along the road, you know, more and more Macau people will be living there. Right? Uh, Article 39, support and encourage the opening of schools for Macau children who shall enjoy same rights as the Hang Qin counterparts. And Article 40, support Hang Qin Macau youth to innovate and build up their careers with innovative space, including Chinese and Portuguese youth. But friends here, uh, if you take a look at the Hong Kong and Macau youth awareness, especially the awareness of uh, Greater Bay Area, not, not, not to mention Hang Qin, the awareness degree is pretty low. Uh, one survey, I can't remember which uh, survey conducted by a group in Macau, it shows that only 15% of the Macau youth are aware of the Greater Bay Area. Hang Qin probably even lower. So I think we have to educate the youth uh, in the coming years. Hong Kong a little bit better, but only about 22%. Article 41, the people in, in and outside Macau with professional qualifications in, in monetary and financial areas, construction, planning, and design can provide service in the zone after registration and professional supervision. Article 42, support services for Macau model of healthcare, education, broadcasting themes, community, and Kai Fong services. Kai Fong means the neighborhood association, right? Neighborhood. Article 43, encourage Macau health services to operate agencies in the form of individual investment, joint venture, and other co cooperative models. And that's interesting. So they, they probably they expect to move some elderly people to move to the cooperation zone and then provide more health services, right? Uh, elderly homes, uh, health care services for the elderly. Article 44, support the convergence with Macau's elderly service, care, and facilities. Article 45, actually the same things, uh, same, same situation occurs in Shenzhen. Article 45, contingency plan and reporting system shall be developed and promoted to deal with the emergency situation in public health. And then Article 46, support the provision of social services. Uh, for Macau. So basically another shadow Macau. Article 47, support the development of new system for Macau Yiti Hua with high standard marketization and the rule of law. That, that, this, this article is very interesting, friends. They use the term high standard marketization, Xi Chang Hua, and the rule of law, Fa Zhi. Uh, article 48, goods going from Macau to first line are tax exempted but with simplified reporting procedures. Article 49, goods going in and out of the second line will have tax levy and tax reimbursement in accordance with the law. The first part is about tax levy. The second part is a very long article. second part is about tax reimbursement. Article 50, animal and plant inspections shall be built up right, with a quarantine. Article 51, joint inspections shall be implemented in the first line, but they also support Macau vehicles and drivers to go into the zone. That's interesting. So maybe that's the reason why they have to speed up the legal aid uh, arrangement now. You know, you have to look ahead. Article 52, Hang Qin Coastal Border set up visa agency to facilitate the entry of foreigners into the Song. It's not difficult at all. 
right? Shen Zhen is also doing that. Article 53 supports the relaxation of market entry to allow various investors to invest and trade in the zone. Again, not very difficult. Article 54 supports account management system to promote the movement of capital between the zone and Macau and also support cross border insurance products and services. Friends, if you are in the insurance agencies, this is important. Uh, this is the legal stipulation for you to do business there. Article 55, support a green channel for international internet and support Macau's high education institutes and research organizations to conduct scientific research under the principles of protecting individual information and important data. So friends, I think uh, in the long run, Macau universities, all the universities, they have to set up campuses in the cooperation zone to deal with this Article 55, right? And then the question of land use, you know, etc. Article 56, construct civil and commercial regulations and rules to, co to converge with Macau and the international system. Article 57, the implementation committee and the Guangdong agencies under the approval of the management committee can suggest Zhu Hai People's Congress to formulate legislation and regulations for the Song's implementation. That's interesting. You know, uh, so the, the, the committee, uh, the implementation and management committee can provide feedback to the Zhu Hai People's Congress and Zhu Hai People's Congress will enact legislation to deal with the Song's implementation. Article 58, the implementation committee and Guangdong agencies under the approval of the management committee can suggest to the Guangdong People's Congress to adjust or terminate the Guangdong legislation and regulations. That's quite interesting. So uh, in Chinese politics, we talk about democratic centralism, right? So it is centralized, but also some democratic elements here uh, in Article 57 and 58. Article 59, the IC, the Implementation Committee, can clarify a work agency's implementation of its administrative penalties and rights. So they provide some administrative checks and balance, right? Article, 50, Article 60, the unit and individual can launch administrative appeal to the Implementation Committee and Guangdong agencies for the administrative behavior. So again, here this is interesting. This is an administrative review process here. Uh, Article 61, they try to strengthen Guangdong Macau judicial exchange and cooperation and promote international trade adjudication, arbitration, and mediation. Now, that's interesting because uh, in uh, Shenzhen, Qianhai, you know, in Qianhai, they are also talking about uh, you know, here mediation, adjudication. Uh, so, some sort of uh, legal uh, integration is occurring, you know, not only between Macau and Hangqin but also between Hong Kong and Shenzhen. This is, this is very interesting. Article 62, promoting servicing integration of lawyers, notarized public, and legal aid services between Guangdong and Macau. Article 63, support the establishment of extraterritorial registration and inspection services, including Macau and Portuguese-speaking countries. Article 64, strengthen the supervision of market production and activities and establish credit information notice. Article 65, they establish safety and risk prediction and prevention system to prevent important risk. Uh, now, then, uh, what are the implications for Macau and Hong Kong and Shenzhen? Well, as I mentioned briefly, I think another special administrative region, Hangqin Haifen Macau Cooperation Zone, surrounding the Macau SAR is already legally established. Already legally established. With the passage of time, this song, with its first line, can be and will likely be well positioned to be absorbed territorially into Macau if the central authorities want to do so in the future. I don't know the timeline, but there will be a realistic possibility here. So creating another bigger Macau territory is underway, and such territorial absorption of Hangqin into Macau may depend on several factors. Number one, the population expansion in Macau, Number two, the limited geographical space of Macau. Number three, the demand and the wish of the Macau government. And finally, the preparedness of such integration from Hangqin perspective. And of course, from the central government and provincial government's perspective, because we don't know their considerations uh, five to ten years later. But I think it will be quite likely that the Hangqin hyphen Macau cooperation zone with the patches of time will be integrated into the Macau SAR. If so, it has tremendous implication for Hong Kong's integration uh, with the Shenzhen, the Qianhai, and also the Lok Ma Chao Loop. 
And if Hong Kong Shenzhen integration will likely follow this Macau Hang Chin model, the current cooperation zone is, is, is like what the late Chinese leader Deng Xiaoping said. China can and is creating more SARs in the southern Chinese region. Well, you can talk about you know, Zhuhai and other you know, Pearl River Delta cities, but I don't think they are the uh, SARs like uh, Hong Kong and Macau. I think the real uh, regions really similar to Hong Kong and Macau uh, are respectively Shenzhen and also Hangqin. Hong Kong's territorial integration with Shenzhen is lower because the Hong Kong SAR needs to coordinate and communicate with Guangdong and Shenzhen on how to merge the development of the northern metropolis with Shenzhen. Right? Hong Kong now is developing the northern new territories and it takes time because they have to discuss with Shenzhen on how to link up the infrastructure system, like the railway, tunnel, you know, roads, etc. So they will have to discuss this issue. So uh, I think that's the reason why John Lee has to meet uh, various uh, new ministers of China uh, this week. This raises the challenge to both Hong Kong and Macau. I think there are challenges. Number one, the, the capacity of the Hong Kong and Macau government. Both governments have shown relatively weak capacity, which will have to be enhanced through the recruitment of elite civil servants, Macau is doing now, right? Uh, and they're better on the job training and professionalization. I think the capacity issue will have to be solved because Macau is going to be more complex. Hang Chin, you know, demands a stronger capacity of the Macau government. But of course, one can say that you know, the Macau government officials can learn, the authorities can learn from, from Hang Chin and also Zhu Hai and Guangdong. The second one is the accelerated development of the smart cities in both Hong Kong and Macau. Right? I think uh, the smart cities here in the two places have to be developed in a much quicker way. The third one, is, as I mentioned earlier, is the youth awareness of Shenzhen in, Ho in the case of Hong Kong and Hang Chin in the case of Macau. And most importantly, their willingness to move there, to reside, to work there and innovate. You, you, you have to give them some incentives monetary incentives, etc. Shenzhen is doing that, uh, Chen Hai is doing that, but still not many Hong Kong youth are going there. The fourth is the acceleration in the training of local talents, and sadly, both Hong Kong and Macau are lacking talents and rely on the necessity of the global, so-called global talent scheme, which is in fact the mainland talents importation scheme, basically mainlanders. Uh, two weeks after this uh, global talent scheme was published, uh, Jose, my students in Shanghai told me that she applied. <laughs> you know, in fact, the statistics show that about 50,000 mainlanders apply within the first two or three, three weeks. 50,000, so, so many. So, so one can argue that, well, you know, Hong Kong and Macau can depend on mainland talents. We, we don't need to train our talents. I don't think so. I think we, we should try our best to, to train our talents locally. Fifth, the triangular relations between the government, strategic industry like Chinese medicine, etc., that we mentioned above in the legislation, in both places, and the higher education institute should be improved, should be regularized with better planning, better manpower projections, better annual surveys, better data to be released to the public, and better occupational sectors. Because I did some research on Macau, and I think the census conducted in Macau, they, they lack a lot of in-depth data and analysis. For example, I, I, I didn't find any data on the Macau University's graduates. Who were the graduates staying in Macau to work? Who were they? What, what occupational sectors they work in Macau? No such data. No such data. So I think the data will have to be improved because you know, if you take a look at the legislation, they talk about KPIs. If you have KPIs, we need better statistics, better data. Six, the small and medium enterprises may need more subsidies and incentives from the governments in both Hong Kong and Macau to move into Shenzhen and Hang Chin region. Hong Kong is doing that, but whether the subsidies are enough, well, it's, it's debatable. Uh, you know, so more subsidies, more incentives, this is necessary. Seventh, vocational education will have to be enhanced in both Hong Kong and Macau SAR, especially Macau, where the skill sets of residents need to be enhanced through a revamped continuing education system. 
I know that the Macau government is uh, giving out subsidies of uh, several thousand dollars to people who study, right? But I think there should be more. There should be more because we'll, if you take a look at mainland China, in Guangdong, in whole China, they talk about vocational education training. Very important. And here we cannot just rely on mainland talents, right? We need to train the local talents. Not all, not all youth go into universities, but they need vocational education in a much better way. Hong Kong is now doing that. Hong Kong has the VTC, DI, you know. We, Hong Kong Youth Space, we also produce uh, some vocational training for young people. So here, Macau government may have to be even more strategic in providing subsidies to residents who undergo the on-the-job training. We have to find out, actually, we, we know the strategic industries here. We lay out the industries here. The question is the number, the manpower projection, right? If, as the late legislation spells out the specific areas of development in the song, cruise, tourism, Chinese medicine, AI, ecological protection, you can name, the existing vocational colleges and higher education institutes in Macau should plan ahead and produce five-year plan to achieve the objective of suitable economic diversification. Ninth, if KPIs are required in the song, both Hong Kong and Macau will have to adopt KPIs in the strategic planning and development. And in fact, Mr. John Lee in Hong Kong, he did talk about KPIs in his campaign. <laughs> right. Ten. Finally, the business sector in both places must be informed, they must be mobilized and supported with incentives to move into the Song and also the Shenzhen Zhuhai as supportive moves along the path of integration. So I think uh, more will have to be done. So in conclusion, the term Yi Ti Hua or one systemization was mentioned at least four times in the legislation, meaning that the central authorities and the Guangdong government are keen to make the song as a first step to, number one, speed up Macau's integration with the Greater Bay Area. Number two, to create another small Macau with joint governments, governance with Guangdong and Zhuhai authorities. Number three, pave the way for a possible territorial merger between Macau and perhaps the first line of Hang Qin, Macau cooperation song in the years to come. One may say that, well, Basically, it is just like a merger now. It is unnecessary to have formal merger. But remember, in Chinese history, the territorial boundary, the administrative boundaries of various dynasties could be redrawn from time to time. So this possibility, I believe, will be there. Hong Kong and Shenzhen's integration will likely follow the Hang Qin Macau model in the years to come. However, the challenge is how to enhance the governing capacity and planning and coordination of both the governments of Macau and Hong Kong internally and also cross-border. In short, the late Chinese leader Deng Xiaoping's vision of creating more SARs in southern China is already concretized in the establishment of the cooperation zone of Hang Qin and Macau with Hong Kong and Shenzhen likely to follow suit in the coming years. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's my conclusion. Thank you. Thank you. Oh well, we had, uh, allow me to say, uh, at least 65 uh, reasons or 65 cookies to digest, right? <laughs> Is it the article, 65, right? Is yeah. it? Yes, that's right. Thank you very much. Well, I guess uh, we got so many questions brewing, right? Um, I will use the prerogative of being the chair to ask the first question and then give the floor to our uh, audience. Um, you talk about merger, you talk about absorption, you talk about the possibility of extension of, uh, of, of, of the Macau SCR through uh, the inclusion of the uh, Guangdong Macau in depth cooperation zone in Hangqin. However, there's always this concern that, in fact, this will be an absorption of Macau by the new system that is being established and developed. Also, this. Um, is related to the issue of one country, two systems, uh, and the concept of eating, um, I may say, the one systematization, uh, which you were mentioning, which is the Iti Hua. How to make sense of this, and uh, how do you address these uh, concerns and uh, views that are pretty common here in Macau, and I'm sure in Hong Kong yeah. as well? Uh, yeah, I, 
I think uh, the question of whether whether Macau will be absorbed in the mainland mm. or vice versa uh, depends on our subjective perception. Mm -hmm. uh, that's number one. And number two, if you ask me my objective criteria, I think uh, the question of Macau capacity has to increase uh, because traditionally Macau relies on talents from outside. Mm -hmm. Portuguese, uh, Hong Kong in the 1980s, and now more and more mainlanders. But I think uh, uh, we don't have to worry too much about whether China will absorb Macau and then make the one country, two system you know, diminishing. Instead, I, I think that in this uh, entire process, from what I study, uh, the one country, two system is evolving in a way that there is one country, but two mixed systems, two mixed systems. This is very clear in the legislation. They are trying to create two mixed systems. But it doesn't matter whether, whether we anticipate this that system will go to China or go to Macau. Basically, I think it's both or organic, China, right? It's organic. China yeah. is changing, Macau is changing, and the two systems, the two mixed systems, is very clear here. So my answer to uh, the skeptics is that, well, first of all, of course, we have our subjective perception. Uh, but we have to lay out the objective criteria first, one by one, and just like what I mentioned, and then uh, we use those objective criteria to see whether that kind of merger or integration will be a kind of absorption of Macau into mainland China or vice versa. Maybe, maybe both, maybe equal, 50-50. We don't know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I guess many of you have questions, please. Move forward, please join the conversation with remarks, questions. Who would like to start? Jenny, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sunny, for sharing. And thank you for summarizing the 65 articles. I took pictures, so I don't have to read the whole thing again and again. I just read your comments. <laughs> you, you read three times? But yeah. then I <laughs> now I only need to read one time and get the yes. gist. Uh, actually, just uh, following yeah. Jose's uh, question about that, I think that is a... Uh, lot of consideration for people who are in Macau about the, the, the merger. And what I see now is, uh, do, would you think that this, um, this new legislation and uh, co-management of this corporation soon is actually creating a third system that is going to uh, take over? So will the mergers become the, not the merger of, a, a, well, like you said, a 50-50, a right? The merger of a Hanjing and Macau, and then it becomes a third system. So what is developing under the legislation of this corporation soon? Do you think this is going to take precedent over the current one country, two system? Uh, possible. Yeah, you asked a very good question. I think uh, this third system uh, may have uh, several uh, objectives. Number one. Uh, if we take a look at China's uh, regional development policies in the recent five years, they created a lot of interesting songs, like uh, free trade songs, yeah. uh, like uh, you know, special uh, city with uh, preferences, with uh, preferential treatment to foreign investors. I guess uh, the fact that there are more and more so-called free trade songs surrounding southern China, I mean, Hainan is one of them, more and more. I guess uh, the Chinese authorities might not spell it out clearly, the objectives. But my guess is that, as you mentioned, this may be a kind of third system in which it will be retained without territorial merger with Macau. Just let it mix together. But it will have internal ramifications and impacts on the inner regions of China. That is to say, you know, Deng Xiaoping talked about creating SARs. Well, creating SARs is not easy because you, you need the, the, the radiation effect from Hong Kong and Macau into Shenzhen. And that radiation effect can be seen in Hong Kong. Shenzhen is very strong. Shenzhen in recent years has been portrayed by China as the local motive in southern China, even more forceful yeah. than, than Hong Kong. But Shenzhen is also competing with Guangzhou. You know, same population, you know, but Guangzhou is a kind of old city. Mm -hmm. So in the southern region of China, what is interesting is that from a political perspective, there are fierce competition. They compete fiercely with each other. But the central government is very smart. They, they, they are using these uh, 9 plus 2 cities to tell all the cities that you have division of labor. 
Hong Kong, you focus on monetary financial center, Macau, tourism, international tourism, but not really gaming. In gaming, they use the term suitable diversification. This is very clear. Part of tourism. Yes, yeah. but you, you singled out suitable, but if I'm not mistaken, previously we would come across moderate, right? Moderate. Now yeah. it's suitable. Right? Uh, it's different, right? Is it's it? different. Uh, well, they consistently use this yeah. term, suitable. Yeah. Suitable, yeah. Suitable, yeah. Yeah. consistently. Yes. Uh, now you're talking about the different zones, and uh, now in the case of, of Hangxin, we have the in-depth cooperation zone, the yeah. Sam Hap Koi, right? Uh, yeah. these, these come. So if you compare this with the project for uh, Shanghai and uh, Hong Kong, how different is the Hangxin zone from what is being developed uh, in uh, between Hong Kong and Shenzhen, Shanghai or Shenzhen? Yeah, Shenzhen. Yeah, Shenzhen. Yeah. Shenzhen. No, uh, and, and, and I mean the the special zone for cooperation between uh, Hong Kong and Shenzhen. Now, uh, Hong Kong and Shenzhen, uh, the the cooperation pattern is different mm -hmm. because uh, they carve uh, a part of uh, Hangqin. Hangqin mm -hmm. is the uh, northern part of uh, Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And also, they try to have the Lok Ma Chao loop. You just cross the Lok Wu border. And so the Shenzhen integration with Hong Kong is a little bit different. It, it's a kind of L-shaped integration. Macau, Hangqin is a little bit, geographically, it's, it's a little bit different because mm -hmm. they, they use the legislation first and then push forward. Uh, Hangqin and, and Shenzhen, well, it, it goes bit by bit. Hangqin uh, is not so well known in Hong Kong, although some companies are going to invest there. Although they are arbitrators, you know, lawyers, etc. But Hangqin, I think uh, geographically, some Hong Kong people think that it's far away, uh, not so convenient. Uh, secondly, Hong Kong is now developing northern metropolis. So uh, to, to answer your question, the, the shape of integration, the geographical aspect, and, and also the planning aspect is different. Here, they use the legislation very top down. Shenzhen not so top down. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe Guangdong and Shenzhen government are not so willing to, to cooperate with Hong Kong or vice versa, or vice versa. So, so this, this is quite different. Thank you. Yeah. Well, many questions, I'm sure. Uh, actually, really, really I, I'm hogging the microphone, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Actually, just following yeah. on that, because uh, the, uh, you think that uh, well, uh, the Macau Hangzhen Corporation is trying to become a model for the Hong Kong Shenzhen Corporation, right? Yeah. But Shenzhen is quite an empty space. Not much development, doesn't have much identity of itself. So mm. now it's, uh, it's just a starting in the beginning. Mm. But differently, Shenzhen is very, very strong. Shenzhen and Hong Kong is like two strong bodies already. Yeah. So it's not that easy to integrate like Macau and Hangzhen. Yeah. So... How, to, how far, to what extent do you think this model of Macau Hanjin could be used for Hong Kong Shenzhen? Uh, yeah, you're right. You know, Shenzhen in the past was, kinda, was a, like a kind of backwater. Now it's developing rapidly. But I think uh, still uh, the Hangqin and Macau model, as uh, Article 2 mentioned very explicitly, uh, it seems to have demonstration effect. I think the central authorities, when they planned this uh, integration, they did think about Hong Kong and Shenzhen, but they didn't want to spell it out so early as to preempt the Hong Kong authorities to discuss with Shenzhen, because there will be a whole range of issues uh, to be discussed between Hong Kong and Shenzhen. Uh, like, for example, you know, how will be the boundary be demarcated? Uh, because the Lok Ma Chao Loop is, is still problematic. Lok Ma Chao Loop belongs to Shenzhen. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, that kind of uh, area has uh, very soft soil. It's not easy for construction. So uh, they talk about cooperation, but it is still lingering on. Mm -hmm. And now they, they use a northern metropolis because the, 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 the soil is much better for construction. So I think they have to calculate a lot of things. But I think the Shenzhen uh, authorities, uh, as you know, uh, when the mainland uh, officials are sent to Shenzhen, usually they are promoted upward. Uh, so if you are Shenzhen cadres, uh, you know, party secretary or governor, you have a better prospect of promotion. And of course, you have to deal with uh, Hong Kong in a very skillful way. But that kind of uh, tenure of office is still short term because they, they even rotate people five years on, rotate. 
So within the continuity, there is personnel discontinuity. Uh, of course, the continuity also comes from the central government in Beijing, better planning. So you're right, maybe Hong Kong and Shenzhen may move so slow that it may not look to Hong, uh, Macau and Hangqin. Uh, because the big brother mentality in Hong Kong sometimes persists. And we don't know whether that kind of big brother mentality <laughs> will affect uh, the impact of the uh, Macau Hangqi model on Hong Kong and Shenzhen. Yeah, because I think it's a bit too fast. Because uh, if they want to model on Macau Hangqi, should be, there should be some success seen in uh, Hang, yeah. Macau and Hangqi before uh, Hong Kong and Shenzhen might think about, ah, oh, this is something we can do. But till now, what I would say is that uh, we still don't have a much to show yet for others to be modeled on, right? Yeah. Anyway, I'll shut up. And thank, you. <laughs> thank you, Chani, please. Uh, who else would like to join? Yes, please, Andrew, thank you. All right, thank you very much, right. Professor, for the wonderful talk. Um, my question actually follows Jenny's, but one specific uh, thing, it's about the people, right? Uh, a lot of times we look at the policy, but we will also need to look at the transfer of people. I believe the governor that is now in charge of Guangdong was actually from Shenzhen. Yeah. Right. So, so would he have? Would that have a big impact? As we all know, that we always take our team or what we have done was successful in Shenzhen and maybe transfer it at a larger scale, right? Because we saw that with uh, the uh, governor Ma, which did a good job. And now it's transferred to Xinjiang, uh, right? Massive horror. Right. Yeah. So, uh, what what do you have, uh, you know, in terms of that? What are the comments for that? I Thank think you. Uh, whoever is the leader of uh, Guangdong uh, and Shenzhen, they will have to demonstrate to the central authorities that this Greater Bay Area integration will have to go full speed, because uh, if you take a look at Han Zhang, the former uh, chair of the uh, leading small group mm -hmm. on. Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area integration. He was uh, very straightforward. You, know, you have to you know, uh, speed up integration process. So in terms of uh, personnel change, uh, I think uh, whoever will be the leaders of Guangdong, Shenzhen, Hong Kong, Macau, Hangqin, they will have to do a good job because this is the national planning policy and this is the national blueprint. Uh, the question is, uh, I think, uh, at the middle level, the question is the middle level. I think uh, at the middle level, it, it needs all the bureaucratic coordination and communication. It is, it is not easy. It is not easy. So uh, although the top, top down of perspective, the political leaders have the political will, but I doubt uh, how uh, these four places can coordinate well. Uh, I just have some doubts. Now we have uh, uh, just a note. You were you were pointing out that uh, Shenzhen can be a, a good stepping stone towards a promotion. Well, yeah. if we look at who's the current and the new, relatively new governor of Guangdong, Wang Weizhong, he was previously the party secretary in Shenzhen. Yeah, that's right. So it's 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 an it's an interesting point. Now we have a relatively new party secretary in Guangdong province in Huan Kunming. He's from the Politburo and it's considered to be pretty close to Xi Jinping. Do you think he can make a difference uh, to push forward this project? Uh, I don't see the major difference because, uh, as I mentioned, whoever will be at the helm of this, uh, you know, provincial governor, provincial party secretary, or Shenzhen party secretary, they will have to do a good job. Otherwise, because the key performance indicators of the mainland cadres, they are very clear cut. You have to implement the directives of the central government, top down, mm -hmm. top down. So the KPIs of the cadres in mainland, they are much clearer. So I think they have to do a good job. And also because of all these assessment, annual assessment, I think they will be hard pressed to speed up everything. Thank you. Well, I would like to invite more participants to join the talk, to jump in, please. please. Ah, I'm sorry, Jill. No, no problem. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. No, 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 please. No, please. No, no, I, I actually don't need a mic. I'll speak loud. Oh, yeah, so that's right. Um, please, Jill, I please, go ahead. Sorry. You on the question. Oh, fine. Thank you. Very much. On the question of law, uh, because, of course, at the moment we have three jurisdictions, as you know, should, in fact, this whole area have a law unto itself? 
I mean, I posed the question. Yeah. I posed the question actually to a number of people, and nobody, of course, has an answer because all of this is under discussion. And really, I, I, you know, in two years, I've never had a concrete answer from anybody, including lawyers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is, a, Jill, this is a good point. I think, uh, well, of course, uh, the three places have uh, very different legal systems. And these kind of legal systems uh, differences can pose uh, an obstacle to real territorial integration. Uh, take the example of legal aid uh, agreement. Right? <laughs> Macau is now discussing with mainland on legal aid uh, uh, agreement. Uh, and Hong Kong and Macau also lack that kind of legal aid uh, arrangement. And not to mention the relationship between Hong Kong and mainland China, ironically. So even even Hong Kong and Macau territorially integrated with mainland China. Legal integration lags behind. <laughs> uh, uh, from some people who have the Western interest to see a kind of uh, two systems lingering on in uh, Hong Kong and Macau, of course, uh, they can argue that law is so unique that we, we don't have to integrate. But in this uh, process of integration, uh, perhaps, we are not talking about legal integration strictly, but a kind of legal harmonization. How to harmonize the different legal systems. And that kind of harmonization process is tortuous. It's difficult. It's difficult. It's, it's a lot of argument, human rights argument, you know, and then you know, developmental argument. I think it takes uh, at least uh, 50 years to harmonize okay. different legal systems. From that perspective, it, it may not be so bad because, because when we talk about the two systems, basically, you know, two systems are also legal differences. Uh, that's the reason why they came up with the joint declaration, you know, basic law. You know. So my answer to your question is that, uh, well, uh, both positive and negative. Negative in, the sense, negative, first. negative in the sense that it hinders territorial integration. Hinders that real territorial integration. But from a Marxist perspective, dialectical perspective, this is good because all these contradictory forces are fighting in such a way that the law is becoming clear. At least, you know, okay, in the process, you solve the differences, hammer out the solutions. So if from, from Deng Xiaoping's perspective, he, 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 he might anticipate that kind of legal differences. Uh, he said that, well, you know, China may take uh, 100 years to change. <laughs> so from that perspective, I think, uh, uh, am I answering your question? <laughs> Eventually. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yes, legal harmonization. Legal harmonization. Yeah. Thank okay, you, Jill. Uh, Please, just Pedro. one simple question. Do you think that the Taiwan authorities should look at this process of integration? Ah, I think... Uh, uh, if you take a look at the Greater Bay Area development, originally Taiwan was included in the Greater Bay Area development, but then eventually Taiwan was deleted in the central government's uh, documents on Greater Bay Area development. Having said that, uh, if you take a look at the recent uh, central government's policy towards Taiwan, the central government officials, they use the Fujian province to create that kind of dynamic interaction with, with Taiwan. So from that perspective, uh, this kind of you know, uh, territorial regional integration in southern China may be experimented between Fujian and Taiwan one day. Maybe. Because uh, Fujian, they are talking about a possibility of building a, a bridge to link it up with uh, you know, Jinmen, Jinmen and Maju. Mm -hmm. And also, they, they consider the, some engineers in China, they are considering the possibility of building a kind of underground tunnel to link up Fujian with Taiwan. Well, this is interesting. It means another way of Hong Kong Macau Zhuhai Bridge using infrastructure development to integrate first because this is non sensitive, right? This is the least politically sensitive, this is the pragmatic approach. So by using this pragmatic approach, Fujian and, and Taiwan will probably use infrastructure integration first, and then followed by now, actually, actually now, social and human interaction. After that, they will carve out some areas in, in Fujian, and then giving preferential treatment to Taiwan people. And in fact, if you take a look at the central authorities, they are very smart. They are targeting at Tinmen and Maju. 
especially Tinmen, they call it uh, Sam Tong, you know, free, free, uh, free uh, interactions, right? Uh, the air uh, and also the sea and also mail, right? They try to accelerate that kind of interaction. So I think it has some implications, but only for the long run. China seems to have its separate policy on Taiwan, but having said that, they may, uh, with the passage of time, they may use some elements of this kind of a Hong Kong, Shenzhen, Macau, Hangqin integration to deal with Fujian, hyphen, uh, Taiwan integration. It's possible. Thank you. Please. Uh, yes, please, Nile. Oh, thank you. Um, timelines. Normally, oh. China goes in the five year plans. The 65 points here, were there timelines indicated? Uh, and as you mentioned, some of the integrations here are going to take forever. Some of the legal uh, um, uh, cooperations, etc., will take an awful long time. Were there indications of timelines from the government in this 65 points? And um, was there objection or debate among the Guangdong province, five year plan, yes, sir. Henqing, I'll do what I'm told, and Macau. Was there, was there any <laughs> conflict or debate that came out there? And uh, then what is your opinion on yeah. what the reality of this will be? Yeah, you raise a good question. We don't know the timeline, frankly speaking, because uh, usually when such policy was initiated, it came from the State Planning Commission, that's number one. And the think tank behind is the Academy of uh, Social Science uh, in Beijing. So the think tank uh, usually plays a crucial role. Uh, back in 2009, when I visited uh, Guang, Guangzhou, I went to the Academy of Social Science, and they already talked about Greater Bay Area integration without using the GBA term. Uh, because uh, I talked with them about possible integration between uh, Shenzhen and Hong Kong. And they said, uh, well, we, we think about that. And actually, they wrote quite a lot of papers to the provincial government in Guangdong. So in China, policy making comes from the top, usually. But at the same time, they attract all these uh, talents uh, from think tanks to provide them with some uh, advice. So I don't think there is a fixed timeline, judging from the legislation and discussion. but. Uh, to uh, deal with the gentleman's uh, earlier question. I, I, I'm curious whether uh, China's relation with Taiwan will, will actually reversely put a kind of timeline on this integration. That is to say, uh, if China is eager to you know, accelerate integration with Taiwan, they will have to demonstrate to Taiwan that this model is interesting. This model is interesting. Uh, so if this is the case, if this logic is accurate, they will speed it up as soon as possible. Because six years ago, when I talk about integration, I couldn't imagine they, they do things so fast. Could you anticipate that? So I think I doubt whether this kind of integration is actually a plan well before 2047 in the case of Hong Kong and before 2049 in Macau. But they didn't spell it out explicitly. Because logically speaking, when the two SARs, uh, you know, timeline reaches there, well, then you have to think about a plan. And I think the plan is already here, but they didn't spell it out. And what is interesting about the official Chinese discourse is that one country, two system will continue, mm -hmm. will continue. Actually, right? actually, Xi Jinping, when he was last year in, in Hong Kong in his uh, speech, uh, he uh, emphasized that one country, two systems was a long-term uh, policy. Yeah. How, how do you make of it considering well, this development? Taiwan. Taiwan. Because if you take a look at the discourse and the terminology used by the Chinese leaders on Taiwan, they use the term, quote, Taiwan model of one country, two system, end of quote. That's number one. Number two, President Xi Jinping even said explicitly that this Taiwan model, I quote, can be explored further, end of quote. It means that, okay, what is the meaning? It can be explored further. Uh, so I think they, they, they retain that discourse, one country, two system in Hong Kong, Macau, because Taiwan is having relevance. So you have Aumann, Tersa, Iguo, Yangzhi, Xiang Kang, Tersa, Iguo, Yangzhi, and in the future we have Taiwan, Tersa, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Macau characteristics of one country, two systems, 
one country to systems with Hong Kong characteristics and one country to systems uh, with yes. uh, possibly with yes. the Taiwan characteristics. Exactly. Is, that, is that the idea? Yes, exactly. Okay. exactly. Okay. It's sense. a kind of, uh, if you like, uh, Chinese semi-federal system with Chinese characteristics, but they don't like to use the word federal. Because it's a unitary state. Yes, it's unitary. Yeah, of course. Uh, okay, um, more questions? Um, more remarks? I guess Paul would like to say something. <laughs> uh, can you uh, review again one more time uh, the situation with regard to the status of the IC and the MC committees, whether they've been populated mm -hmm. with individuals and what the budget arrangements are? Are these operating up and running presently at the moment? And who are the dominant individuals there? I think the management committee is already set up. Right, uh, implementation committee is uh, is composed of Macau and also Guangdong Zhuhai officials. Uh, well, uh, I think uh, it was already set up, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, set up already with uh, government officials uh, involved from both sides. Uh, but we will expect uh, more report, you know, from this uh, committee because according to the legislation, it will have to be a little bit more transparent. They will submit the report to the central authorities, the Guangdong authorities. So, you know, as uh, reporters, uh, we may have to ask the government for some more details in the coming years. So, but basically, I think the management committee is the top level policy making body. As I pointed out in the legislation, they deal with uh, policies, planning, projects, but the implementation committee is solely uh, on implementation. So it's a kind of a very interesting uh, structure here. Uh, and I think this structure will facilitate the development of the cooperation zone. I think, uh, well, it, it remains to be seen. But uh, to answer a question, I think they set up the committees already. Well, um, anyone else would like to? We have some lawyers here in from the insurance industry as well. Any of the one from the legal field would like? There's uh, a number of. Uh, Challenges, I guess, right? Um, okay, so I will. One more question. Oh, yeah, one more question, please. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, all the currencies, yes. In the finances of the currencies, yes. what's, what's going to be the status yes. of yes. this area with respect to currency? Will the Pataka expand its area? Or no. Will there be? Yes. No. Uh, now, uh, that's, that's interesting. Uh, what is interesting about this legislation is that uh, it doesn't really mention the role of B. I was a little bit surprised because uh, uh, you take a look at the central government officials uh, on Hong Kong. They remarked that Hong Kong is expected to expand its role as the offshore B uh, area. And if you take a look at uh, renminbi internationalization rate, uh, Ming Bao, uh, a Hong Kong Chinese newspaper, reported about three weeks ago that Hong Kong occupied 46.8% of renminbi internationalization, mm -hmm. whereas Macau only occupied 3.9%. I remember that, 3.9%. Now, it means that, well, are you going to use this Hangqin Macau cooperation song to speed up the internationalization of B. If this is the case, I think, uh, of course, Patakas will, will still be used in Macau Peninsula, in Tai Pa, but I think the Chinese authorities expect this cooperation zone to speed up the usage of B. Just like President Xi Jinping's uh, visit to Saudi Arabia and Middle East, all the trade transactions are expected to, to, to use uh, B. So to answer the question, I think uh, Pataka will definitely be used. It will continue under this one country, two system, mm -hmm. but territorially limited in the Macau Peninsula, Tai Pa, Holong Island, you know, and a little bit of uh, area of Hang Chin uh, at the University of Macau campus. Other than that, I expect <laughs> run and be, run and be. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's the trend, you know. Yeah. I, I, tell, I tell you the trend analysis here. Thank you. Thank you. So. So Sonny, if <laughs> uh, so Sonny, if I'm the chief executive and you are one of my top advisors, you are the head of the central policy office, the think tank, and you're going to advise me what should I do uh, to get the city, the SA ready for this big challenge. 
So it will be more of a level playing field and not so much asymmetrical regarding what is at stake and what's the interest of the Macau SAR and its people. What would you tell me? I think, uh, well, of course, uh, I'm not his advisor, but I think I'm not I the would, chief executive. Yeah, I think I would advise him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I think, you see, you got me. <laughs> I think I would advise him to set up a, a, a special committee uh, dealing with this uh, cooperation zone development. It's very complex, judging from these uh, 66 articles. It is uh, basically creating another Macau uh, with the implication of co-governance, governing with uh, you know, Hang Chin together. It's extremely complex, and I don't think the current setup and structure are conducive to that planning. So I would suggest that maybe the chief executive and his advisor would like to set up a kind of a special commission uh, headed by you know, the CE himself uh, to deal with all aspects of uh, Hang Qin's uh, development. And the fact that I already have a full-time job, right? And then I have a sort of a part-time job in the co-management of uh, Hang Qin. Uh, the same goes to the Guangdong side and also you have the, also the component of the, the Zhuhai side. How functional is this? Uh, that now. I'm talking about the, the management committee, yeah. the executive committee arrangement. What's your view on, uh, on the arrangement? Well, the Guangdong side, yeah. uh, ironically, the Guangdong side is working quite well. If you take a look at their activities, the Guangdong side set up a leading group. Yeah. A leading group chaired by the, the I think, party secretary or the Guangdong governor mm -hmm. to deal with this issue. The Guangdong side is really keen to go ahead with this uh, model. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, in parallel with Guangdong's uh, governance structure, Macau may have to do a little bit more. Yeah. Thank you. Any additional questions, remarks? Uh, anything else? So six years ago, so if, I, if you allow me for a, wrap, for a wrap up question, okay. So six years ago we were here uh, talking about Macau, Hong Kong, and the future of one country, two systems. Uh, we don't have to wait another six years to hold another talk, but let's, say, let's just say we, we do. Right? Let's say uh, we'll be back here in 2029. Uh, where would you expect us to be in terms of integration? Um, and uh, what's, your, what's in your crystal ball in this respect? Well, I, I expect uh, the realization of this uh, plan as laid out in the legislation in a more concrete way. That is to say, uh, I expect the cooperation zone to take shape, very concrete shape, uh, with specific areas, with uh, residents, uh, district, with uh, more Macau people going in, with uh, at least uh, some universities having planned dealing with this, because this is a gigantic project, gigantic project. Uh, and I think uh, China has the political will to do so, judging from this uh, legislation. I think Macau has to speed up everything. Mm -hmm. So I expect a very concrete result uh, five years later. Please, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Macau ID status. How do you get into Hong Chen? Do you show your Macau ID? Uh, well, the issue of mobility, right? Mobility, yeah, mobility yeah, for mobility people, yeah. non, non, yeah. non Chinese residents, well, right? Well, just, well, if you have your Hong Kong, I mean, Macau ID, you just show it at the border and you go into the, or there's no border. Uh, I think the well, they, they, there is a border. The cus there is a custom already. The yeah. custom is now building up. So definitely there is a border. You, you Macau people, I expect Macau people use the Macau ID card to go in there. Uh, so there will be some procedures. Pro no visa? No visa required? Of course, they said visa. Yeah. It's visa. visa. Visa is needed. Yeah. Visa. Visa for foreigners. They, they build up the visa policy. There's a lot of foreigners here with Macau IDs. Yeah. yeah. So they're not going in with Hui Gui Zhen. They want to go in with a Macau ID, not a passport. They don't want to get a visa. They just want to use a Macau ID. I just like jump. when you go to Hong Kong, right? Like yeah. that's yeah, where you exactly. ask, like if you were in a yeah. situation where you right. just need to show yeah. your uh, yes, yeah. smart city, smart city. Yes. Right. So yeah, ID card. Uh, I got one final question, if if you allow me. This regards mm -hmm. mobility. So if we look at the uh, integration processes, let's say the European integration, you have the four freedoms, right? Freedom movement of people, goods, capital, and services, right? Um, 
uh, goods, I guess, would be a no, a no, no issue, right? Uh, uh, services, we have the SIPA also and all the supplements that have been uh, enlarging uh, the role and the, the space for free movement and free provision and provision of services. How about capital, capital mobility, repatriation of profits? This is something that is regarded by foreign investors as of paramount importance. Do you expect Hang Xin to be basically just like Macau in Hong Kong in that respect? Uh, no, I don't expect that because uh, China has, uh, you know, foreign exchange control. That's number mm -hmm. one. And number two, uh, China is uh, extremely sensitive to money laundering and mm -hmm. also outflow of capital. Uh, in the last three years, the outflow of capital from China is uh, reportedly huge. So I expect this uh, Hang mm -hmm. uh, Macau region uh, will have a kind of uh, blockchain system using uh, digital uh, technology to detect money flow. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can't expect a kind of a free mobility of goods, uh, money, and people. Goods, well, of course, in the case of uh, Hang Qin, they already mentioned uh, the, the second line. Mm. The border is technically very important to China because they are afraid, uh, they are very concerned about smuggling, human smuggling, mm -hmm. uh, drugs, you know, all kind of smuggling of goods. Uh, which, well, in fact, if you take a look at the, the Greater Bay Area blueprint several years yeah. ago, one part of the Greater Bay Area blueprint that you, you, you may have remember is that they talk about how to control cross-border crime. Cross-border crime. Yeah. Cross-border crime uh, has to be controlled in all these uh, territorial integration, legal integration, whatever. So. Uh, to answer your question, I don't think there will be free mobility of goods, people, everything. Uh, there will be some restrictions, and this will be the beauty of one country, two system. Because from China's perspective, that one country has to control some kind of you know, surveillance on money flow. Uh, for example, who are those uh, people gambling in Macau? You know, they are interested, yeah, right? So, so I think uh, we can't expect <laughs> a kind of well. <laughs> uh, complete, you know, capitalistic system in uh, Hang Qin yes. and Macau. It will be mixed. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it will be one country, two mixed system, and these two mixed system will flourish here. Thank you very much. That's a good wrap up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very very much. You. Amazing talk, Thank you. Sonny. Thank you. As always. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, thank you very much, Ricunha Foundation, the whole crew. Uh, we'll be back soon uh, in April. Uh, I guess I may share something with you. The topic will be AI. So uh, we'll be hopefully an AI opener or an AI opening experience. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, no, no need host exactly. Thank you. <laughs>